What's up you guys? Eco the Living Planet here bringing you week one of the IBL. Uh, this week I'm playing against my good friend Platinum Howler who is one of the people who actually recruited me uh, into this league. Howler and I go way back, have played in a couple of different Pokemon leagues together, most especially the IBL. Um, he's always a very tough opponent and as I know he's the two-time champion of this particular league uh, which means that he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. Um, just a little note as I'm going through this team builder and battle for today, I unfortunately, uh, well I guess fortunately, so good news and bad news, um, good news I recently moved to Oregon from Florida so I no longer live in uh, America's worst peninsula. Uh, bad news, um, while we were on the trip, uh, about midway through it, uh, my laptop bit the dust. Uh, it's been having some issues for a while, some structural issues, and unfortunately, um, it just was not able to uh, survive the wear and tear of moving. Uh, it was about a four-year-old laptop. So um, anyway, um, long story short, I'm stuck with another laptop for right now, and apparently OBS and Elgato do not want to communicate with any of the USB ports, uh, and I unfortunately can't record my own video today. I had a lot cooler ideas in mind for the team builder that I was going to do, and obviously it would have been neat to see my perspective on the battle, um, but unfortunately neither of those things are going to be possible today. So uh, I'm just going to be going through my team builder here, uh, and I will, um, when I edit this, put in some slides to try to indicate. So. The roster that I'm facing uh, is admittedly one of the weirdest ones I've seen Howler ever draft. Um, he's sort of known for picking up odd rosters that maybe don't make quite a lot of sense when you first look at them, uh, but this is certainly one of the stranger ones I've seen him pick up. Uh, we have Cinderace and Azumarill as the main offense. Um, he also has Galarian Slowbro, Galvantula, Pinsur Pinsurchin, for the electric terrain boosts. Thievul, which now gets access to its hidden ability, uh, Stakeout, and it has Burning Jealousy, so it's much more of a threat than it used to be. Gigantamax Flapple, which is always just a huge problem, simply because uh, Gigantamax moves always hit, um, which is a great thing for bypassing Hustle's low accuracy. Uh, and then he has a bit of bulk with Porygon 2, Runergus, Seismitoad, and then Mr. Rhyme, everyone's favorite tap dancing old man. Um, so the build that I have come up with for him is pretty offensive. Uh, looking at my roster, you know, it doesn't have a lot of bulk. I don't think I have any Pokemon with uh, defensive stats over like 100 or 110 anyway. So this is going to be a very hit him fast uh, and try to bring him down hard type build. So the almost likely dedicated lead here is going to be Sylvalli. Uh, and rather than a tight plate, I've decided this week we're just going to run a choice band. Um, he only has Runarigus, which resists uh, normal type attacks. I don't anticipate that Renergus is going to be coming against a team that has Dracovish and Venusaur anyway, so I figure that uh, free multi-attacks based off of the choice band are going to hit pretty hard. And then when uh, Sylvile has done its job and doesn't need to be around anymore, I can always just explode in front of something. Um, yeah. Second up, uh, we have Vikavolt this week, so I'm running a relatively bulky Vikavolt set um, with 180 HP effort values and 164 defense ones with a bold nature. That is to allow it to most likely survive the two-hit KO from an unbanded uh, Azure Merrill's play rough. Um, obviously, if it's banded, then it's going to two-hit KO no matter what. Um, so this Vikavolt's job is basically just to set webs and hit things with attacks. So Volt Switch pairs nicely with the banded U-turns coming off of Sylvalli, and then we also have Bug Buzz to damage the Flapple uh, and Energy Ball so that it can hit the Seismitoad hard. Hitmontop uh, for this particular matchup, I'm not 100% sure what I want it to accomplish. 
honestly. Um, but it has a relatively good matchup. I think it's just supposed to be kind of a pivot wall breaker type thing. I don't know what, if that's even necessarily a role. Um, so we're running an adamant nature, not necessarily ma max attack, um, because I want that nice rounded HP stat with the 140 HP EVs. I am running max speed on it because uh, Hitmontop needs to be able to speed tie the Flapple um, if you know Flapple is not being slowed down by webs. So ideally we get a rapid spin off and Hitmontop can start hitting things because once it has a rapid spin it's going to be outspeeding a lot on his roster and we can hit things with triple axles and close combats. The Sucker Punch, uh, you know, maybe that'll hit a Flapple, um, maybe that'll do some good against that. The Flapple is obviously a big issue, um, but that's mostly for the Rhyme. Venusaur here, as the Gigantamax Pokemon, is the main offensive sweeper. Uh, so we have 60 effort values in speed, which is just enough to outrun a max speed Cinderace after webs have brought it down. So the Venusaur has Toxic to help wear down the Porygon 2. And other than that, we have Sludge Bomb start you know, boosting special attack. Giga Drain, uh, which will recover some HP, and then while Gigantamax turns into the very powerful Gigantamax move, which name I cannot currently remember, uh, but I do know that it does uh, one-sixth of the opponent's HP damage every turn, uh, which is significant because uh, his only grass type, which would be immune to that, is Flapple, which obviously does not want to take max oozes. Um, and then Earth Power will help you know, defeat the Cinderace and such. Uh, the reason why I have the Koba Berry on here is because Flapple, I expect to probably be carrying some type of flying coverage. Um, and being able to carry flying coverage with a, with a Hustle Flapple means that he can boost speed and wall break and doesn't even necessarily need to run Dragon Dance on that thing. Um, Dracovish's role, I don't even think I need to explain. It's Dracovish. Um, it has a choice scarf, it goes in and it clicks Vicious Ren and stuff dies. Uh, every single thing on his team, with the exception of Seismitoad and Porygon 2, is a guaranteed two-hit KO from Ficious Rend. Um, Porygon 2 is a guaranteed two-hit KO if it takes Rocks damage, uh, but obviously that thing can just sit and recover stall um, and try to do other things in front of me, so um, Ficious Rend is probably not the most reliable way to bring it down. Super Fang is here mainly because it ensures that I get a little bit more damage off on a Seismitoad switch in if I predict that than a Crunch would give. Um, crunch is there, uh, I don't know, for Seismitoad. I, honestly, I really only need three moves here. On uh, Really, I only need, like, yeah, three moves. Uh, Vicious Rend, something to hit Seismitoad, and Ice Fang. So combination of Super Fang and Crunch maybe will help wear down Seismitoad. Uh, the Ice Fang is mostly just for the Flapple because I do not want to get locked into Outrage with an opposing Azumarill. And then finally we just have a Sash Alakazam. Uh, in the event that Dracovish cannot clean up on its own, we will have the Alakazam with the Focus Sash and four attacks uh, just to be able to come in and you know hopefully net a couple of KOs at the very end of the game. So, again, a very hyper-offensive team, much more offensive than I'm usually comfortable building. I typically play a bit of bulky offense uh, slash balance, um, so this is definitely out outside my wheelhouse, um, but we're going to see how this goes. Um, so let's go ahead and let Howler know that we're ready to get started. Okay, so... His team is quite similar to what I anticipated. Uh, we've got Sol uh, Seismitoad, Flapple, I almost said Salazzle, that was not correct. Uh, Seismitoad, Flapple, Pinchurchin, Porygon 2, Cinderace, and Galvantula. I was pretty sure that I was going to see Rhyme, uh, because Rhyme deals so well with Venusaur, and that is not a Pokemon that he handles particularly well otherwise. Uh, so, I am anticipating probably either a Galvantula or a Seismitoad lead, possibly Pinchurchin or Cinderace. There's no way he's going to lead with the P2 or the Flapple, I figure. Um, so, I'm probably safe going with my initial plan and just leading with the Silvalli. 
and we'll go from there. It has been a hot minute since I've had a Wi-Fi battle. So, gotta admit, I got a little bit of the jitters right now. Yep, Cinderace lead. I figured that that might be the play if he decides to be a bit more offensive about it. Um, let's see. go for a multi-attack. Oof. That did do quite a lot. top here um, because I don't know if we have a choice really Oh, wow. Damn, a crit. That sucks. Honestly. Um... Do I expect him to switch here? Possibly, honestly. I have a feeling that he could go U-turn into the Seismitoad. Um, but it... We'll just go for a rapid spin and see what happens. So, probably back to the Cinderace here. Yeah, definitely back to the Cinderace. I think I have to go back to the Hitmon top. This is kind of what I'm afraid of. He's able to sort of pressure with the Cinder. Uh, so I need to get it. And I can handle the cinder. And there goes my roaring AC. 
probably about to cover up everything. Um, oof. The pyro ball missed. That is uh, rather unfortunate for him. That could have seriously pressured my team if that pyro ball had landed. Um, hit him on top, taking that much damage early would have put me a bit behind. That was a uh, an interestingly bad play. But uh, we take advantage of those. Potentially be an annoying Pokemon. Do not enjoy facing Porygon 2 at all. accomplish with this. Huh. Trick room. Alright. Well. You don't have anything that wants to take a banded explosion. So. Okay. Uh, now here's the question. Do we go to the Venusaur? I think...
the hit on top is probably safer because I know close combat is going to KO from this range. There's no way that it doesn't. Ah, uh, but he has Trick Room in effect. So I can at least drain a couple of turns of this Trick Room. I mean, he's just going to recover. So realistically, actually, the Venusaur is probably the play. I likely clicked that too soon. Oh well. Ah, <laughs> uh, damn it. I really hope that that's not a play that costs me this match. Because that would really suck. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that is especially defensive Porygon, too. Um, so the close combat ended up being a perfectly good play. There we go. All right. So he's going to go for the tri-attack and probably hope it does something. Are you kidding? It paralyzed me. He goes for two tri-attacks and both get a status. God, that is some luck. All right, but the Porygon 2 is down which is good news. Um, oh, a bit scary if the Flapple comes in. No. start going for the Venusaur. Here we go. Although, letting the Venus or take that much damage, uh, not a great idea. Because means that the Flapple might be able to KO now. Um, but we're gonna see what happens. Wow, this is uh, working well for me so far. Let's hope that we can hold up. Um, he does have a few things that can threaten the Venusaur still. If I'm not careful.
Yeah, so. He took down the Venusaur. down. Cinderace is really weak. And Galvantula is down. So he's got Seismitoad and Cinderace and Flapple and Contrition. Okay. So I think Alakazam is the safest bet at this point. Uh, the para on Correctly, EV the Venusaur. That is uh, not impossible that I did that. Sucker Punch is not necessarily a move that I remember was in Pinjurgeon's roster. So, that was certainly something that I could have done a lot better on. Um, let's see. The Big Apple. So. could be going a lot better for me. It could be going worse. I've KO'd three of his Pokemon. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, a bit of a closer match than I maybe would have hoped, but Howler's a great opponent, so I expect nothing less from him in the end than a truly amazing battle. Ice Fang connects. Otherwise, we just get swept by Flapple now. Yay! Ice Fang, you saved the day. Okay, so we just have the Seismitoad and the very weak Cinderace left. the Vika Volt right now, so we go to the Hitmontop. Hmm. 
Yeah, so he was definitely predicting a beat the bolt there, obviously. Uh, so let's try the sucker. Yep, all right. So we're gonna win this game. Top is gonna go down, but the Vika Volt can come in, and provided there's not some sort of dumbass freeze, we win. Makes sense. Lots of grass coverage on this team after all. And we claim a 2 0 win in our first battle of the IBL against the two time champion. So, strong appearance. Are we setting expectations too high? Probably, honestly. Uh, I don't think that this is a team that I'm particularly comfortable with. Uh, I think that. I had some good luck here, just in the fact that Howler, um, quite honestly, did not draft uh, as well as I think that he would have liked, um, or that he ordinarily does. Um, he also was a bit crunched on this team build, I know. So, you know, lots of opportunities for a rematch. We always have great matches, Howler and I, uh, so I'm really glad that I got to start off my first season in the IBL with uh, a Monday night game against my good friend. Um, so, 2-0 win. Uh, let's see if the Moral Lulls can keep this up. Eco up. <laughs> 